Hi, you're with Chandeep Pat Goodly once again. And in this video, I'm going to speak about the remove other columns feature of Power Query and how can you make it dynamic. Please take a look at the case that I have here. The first column of the data is the name of the person. And then we have address, but we also have address 2, address 3, address 4, and so on and so forth. We have the phone number, but we also have multiple phone numbers. We have the email, but a couple of multiple email IDs, so on and so forth. What I'd like to do is I'd like to keep the name and only the first dimension of the additional details. That means name is good, address is good, only the phone number and only the email. I don't want the second, third, fourth or the fifth and the sixth records. Now, how do you do that in Power Query? If you've already been working with Power Query, you know that you can do that very, very easily using remove other columns. But that is going to give you a slight bit of problem if any more columns are added. Let's just take a look. So I'm going to load this data to Power Query, go to data and then from table range, the data comes into Power Query. You can see that I have the data. Now, let's say, for example, I keep the address uh, and the name, name and the address, and I keep the phone number and I also keep the email. And I right click and I remove other columns. Sure enough, I'm going to have these columns. But what if any other columns are added to the data, they would not automatically reflect here. For example, the name of the child, and if the person has two or three children, you're gonna have two or three columns for the child name. And I just want the first child's name, so I'm not gonna have that column right here. What I'll have to do is, I'll have to come back to the query once again, hit on the gear icon of remove other columns, and then go take a look at the list here. Probably I'll be seeing the new columns name here, and I'll have to tick on that, and that's how I will get the new column added to my data. Now I want to show to you that how can you make it dynamic. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to have the source step only, which is where I load the data into Power Query. The first thing that I want to do is I want to extract all the headers of the columns. No matter how many headers do I have, I want to take all the headers and make it into a table. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a new step. And once I add a new step, I'm going to write a small formula here which is nothing but table dot column names. And it is going to ask me just one input. Hey, what is the name of the table for which you want the column names? The name of the table is source. So the source contains a table and I'm going to write the table name. So that's what I write. Once I press enter, I get the list of all the columns which are there in the source step. You can't do much with lists unless they are converted to a table. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to convert this list to a table so that I can do some transformations right here. So I'm going to right click here and I'm going to convert that to a table and the list now becomes a table. If there are any other columns, I just want to remove them and click on OK and I have the table. Now, what I want to do is I only want to extract all those columns which do not have a number in the end. That's the columns that I want to extract. So I'm going to add a column here and I'm going to add a custom column here and let's just extract the last letter of the column. If you were working with Excel, that formula would have been the right function in Excel. But since we are working with Power Query, that formula is text.end. Text.end is going to ask me, uh, what's your text from which you want to extract? So column one is the text from which I want to extract. I want to extract just one character. I'm just going to specify one. Works just like the right function. Click on OK and you have the rightmost character right here. Now let's just convert that to a number. Uh, this is uh, like a data type as any. If I convert that to a number, obviously anything that is not a number is going to give me an error. So if I convert that to a number, you can see that I have a couple of errors. All right. Now all that I'm going to do is I'm going to remove the errors. So right click on this column and I'm just going to say remove the errors. And I'm only left with those columns which I want to remove from the table. Now as of now, this contains two columns. It's a table but I would like to have a list, right? So I'm going to click on column one, um, which contains the list of the columns that I'd like to remove. I would like to right click here and I'm going to say that drill down. This is going to convert column one into again into a list. But this list is filtered to only those columns which I would like to remove. And you can see in this list, I have all the other columns which are not the first column. So address has been taken, address two, three, four, five are here. Phone has been taken, phone number two, three, four, five are here. So this is good enough. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create another step, click on the FX, and I'm gonna use the function called table.remove columns. Table.remove columns is gonna ask me for two inputs. Hey, what's your table? So the source contains my table. So this is the table from which I pulled out all the headers. And from the source, which contains all the columns, which columns do I want to remove? Those columns are there in this step, which is column one. So I'm just going to write column one right here. 
and that's about it once I confirm from the table which is here let me just confirm that from the table that was here it is going to remove all the columns which are in column one step I'm just going to go to home I'm just going to click on close and load and I get the columns now let's just take a look at is this going to update automatically if I add two more columns in the end so let's just say that I add a child column but I also add one more child column and this is going to become child 2. Let's just give any name. The name doesn't matter here. So let's just give something like a super child. And I'm going to go back to sheet 1 and let's just do a refresh here. So instead of getting two child columns, I should only get one child column. Right click here, click on the refresh and sure enough, I only get one child column. The technique that I've shown to you here, which is where I extract all the names of the columns and then I convert that into a table and then start working with that table can be used anywhere where you want to work with the headers of the data. Do some transformations and then use it back on the table once again. I hope you like it. If you have any questions around this, please feel free to put them down in the comments. I'll be more than happy to help you out. And that's about it. Thanks for watching. Thanks for sticking around. I'll see you in the next one. Cheers and bye-bye.